So let's take a look at some of the tools that we're going to need for building this quad. We'll go through the kind of the basic ones first and then at the end I'll talk about um, some of the tools that you might need for the soldering because there will be soldering involved in, in this build. So first of all, these are all hex drivers and I've got them from between one and a half millimeters all the way up to two and a half. So one and a half, two and two and a half millimeter hex drivers. So they just have the, the hex head on them are pretty much the three standard sizes that you'll need. Um, I've got a pair of tweezers here, which are kind of the reverse of normal ones. They, um, they stay closed and then when you squeeze them, they open and when you unsqueeze them, they close. And it's a really, really great way to be able to just hold on to something and let it sit there. And it's a really nice thing when you're soldering things in tight or you can't quite reach your fingers into some place to plug it in. Um, tweezers like this where you can actually grab on and don't have to pinch it anymore and then maneuver it into place are very, very handy. Next, some kind of wire cutters or wire nippers are needed. These ones here are your standard uh, wire cutter with a stripper in there with a different setup for the different gauge of wire. You can absolutely use one of those if you have. If you just simply have side cutters like these, they will be totally fine as well. As long as you have something that you can use to cut wire that you need to cut in a very clean and precise way. And these will do that very easily. You will also, as you get closer to the end of the build, need a multimeter like this as a way of being able to test that um, all of your soldering has been done properly and you don't have any uh, shorts in what you've done. If you don't have a multimeter, you can use um, something like this, which is called a smoke stopper. Uh, this will let you know when you plug in your LiPo battery if there is a short because it will reroute the, the electricity through here and it's got a beeper and a light that goes off. So this is just a simple way of making sure that you don't fry your electronics at the end of your build. Now, moving on, just a, some more, a few simple little things. Things like shrink wrap, shrink wrap, heat shrink. That's what it is, not shrink wrap, heat shrink. Um, in various diameters, basically anything from maybe a quarter of an inch um, circular diameter here, or maybe three eighths of an inch down to about an eighth of an inch, just for the different size wires that you might um, need to put heat shrink over. And so that's that for those. Now, a couple of things that are probably very important, but not strictly necessary. One of them is this here. Now, there's lots of different ver varieties of this, but it's just a thread locker or Loctite. And this will be pretty important for uh, applying to the screws that hold the motors in place. In a larger quad, trying to do anything to remove vibrations or have anything come loose is very important. So a thread locker will be important to apply to the bolts to hold the motors in place and will keep them secure. The other thing that is not strictly necessary but would be very helpful is this here, which is damping grease. Now this is something that you would put on the frame as you're building it. And what it does is it provides a layer of very, very thick grease, very thin layer of very thick grease between all of the carbon and that really reduces vibration and again really helps with keeping your quad tuned and flying smoothly. Now, if you don't have this, don't worry about it. It's not strictly necessary. Now we'll get into the last part here, which is soldering. I really recommend getting yourself some no clean flux. Uh, I happen to use MG chemicals. It's what's readily available around here, but a no clean flux pen will make your soldering life a lot easier. This is a, a lead and tin solder, I think is what this one is. It's a 6337 mix. I really recommend using lead solder if you can get it and, and are allowed to use it. Where you now, for what I do, a lot of what I use is 23 gauge, or you can see here it's 0 0.025 inch diameter. And this is very, very fine solder. It's not thick at all. And that's simply because most of the solder pads that we're working with, with flight controllers are actually really quite small and you don't need large solder to, to cover it up. So that's what I would typically use in terms of the solder. For years, I used this right here. It's just a, a circuit test, 30 watt little soldering iron and it worked just fine. Okay. And I think it cost me $40. Now, is it ideal? 
No, but it will absolutely work and it will absolutely do the trick. So if you can get yourself 30 to 60 watt soldering iron at your local electronics store for cheap, and this is what you're doing, it will work. It is much better to have one that you can actually adjust and set the temperatures on, um, but that typically adds a lot of price to it. Now, the only other thing I will say about soldering is that with the soldering irons, we can have different sizes of tips. And so it's important to make sure that the tips that you have are not really, really large and not too tiny, or to have two separate tips, one that's a little bit larger and another like this, which is quite a bit finer for when you're doing really precise work. Okay. Again, not strictly necessary, but very helpful. So with that, you've seen all of the tools that we will basically need in order to be able to build um, this quadcopter out. We've seen all of the parts, which are still kind of laying around and scattered all over the place here. You've seen the basic tools that we need uh, in order to be able to proceed with the build. So I hope you come along for the ride and that um, as we go through it, you'll find it to be uh, helpful and informative. And by all means, if at any point you have a question, drop them down in the, uh, in the comment section below. It's always appreciated.